On Friday, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak made the announcement that American XL bully dogs will be banned by the end of the year following the latest dog attack, which saw a man lose his life. This marks the fifth breed to be banned since the introduction of the Dangerous Dogs Act. However, questions remain about how exactly a ban will be implemented and its impact on current dog owners, of course. Well, to find out more, we're joined by Linda Cantle from the Wood Green Animal Charity, proud XL bully dog owner Chris Halls, and canine behavioural expert Stan Rawlingson. Uh, good morning to morning. all of you. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Uh, Linda, let's start with you, first of all, shall we? Because um, a lot of, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, about these dogs, and actually, what are they? So they're not recognised by dog associations such as the Kennel Club at the moment. So are we waiting for an exact definition of this breed? Yeah, exactly that. It's a real challenge. We don't know exactly what an XL bully is right mm. now. There's a whole myriad of descriptions of what they might be, anything from a 35 kilo dog to a, a 10 stone dog. So it's a really, really challenging situation to be in when actually we're talking about breed type as if all of us know what it is, mm -hmm. but actually any each given person might identify a different dog as that. So there are many dogs that could be pulled into this that, that might not be of that breed time. Right. So the biggest challenge in the next few months is creating some clarity about what that breed type is and yeah. which will be subject to the ban. Mm -hmm. Let, let's start with some clarity on what ban actually means in this case. Yeah, and I think that's really important. When, when this was first announced on Friday, I think a lot of people were, were really, really worried. And, and what we want to say to those people that, that have XL bullies or may have XL bullies is, is, is don't panic. There are things that, that you can do to keep your dog safe, to keep yourself safe, but also to protect the public. So we expect people to be able to register their dogs. They'll be subject to an assessment to ensure that they're safe in the public and um, that the people are fit and proper to own them. But there are measures that can be taken. You can train your dog to be used to and to wear a muzzle and you need to, to keep them restrained out in public. So there are ways that, that you can keep your dog and register that dog. So we'll get a better understanding of, of how many of these dogs so are So essentially, they'll be on an, like an exempt list and you will have uh, a sort of certificate to say that you are exempt from, from the ban. And so therefore, that, that's how that will work. Yeah. Um, but what about with the police? Now that this ban's in place, I mean, will they have... Will they be able to take your dog away? There's certainly possibilities of that, and particularly if your dog is out of control in a public place, then yes, absolutely. Um, they, they, they may come into your home, but you can take really, really sensible precautions to, to protect your dog. If you're a responsible dog owner that has, has trained your dog and, and can keep them managed, then there are ways that, yeah. that you can get them on the exempt lift list and register to keep them safely but if a dog is is seen to be dangerously out of control yeah. then absolutely they they may be seized but again the challenge will be knowing which are this breed type which mm. may be yes. based on measurements and all different things which which isn't something yeah. that the eye can see so it's going to be a really challenging time and a really worrying time for a lot of owners but also a fearful time for for communities and members of the public. Do you know what we should do is we should meet one of these dogs uh, and their owner so everyone at home knows what they actually look like. Chris is joining us now with his beloved pet who's asleep on his lap and it, it, it's hard to imagine, Chris, that we're talking about a dangerous dog when you see, um, see your, your pet sitting there asleep. Um, but introduce us, please. Yes, yeah, so this is the uh, youngest member of, of our family. This is Furiosa. Um, she's a beautiful dog. Um, she's a, a pure breed XL bully. Um, and I'm Chris, I'm a professional dog trainer um, and I specialise in working with bull breeds. So, so Chris, I just wanted to, because you've got, you've got this is your family member right here, but you have got children, you've got me who's 40, 40, uh, 13, you've got Ernie who's five. As much as you are very professional, like you say, you train these breeds, you, 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 you're happy for them to be around the children, but you wouldn't, for example, and this is what you said to us, never let them play a tug day game because that presents a risk. So even you are aware of the risk. Yes, I, I think that that's where a lot of the problem has come from is that people are not aware of what the risks are of having such a strong, um, determined, powerful dog. Um, so I, I take their interactions with the children very, very seriously. And um, 
in my household, the children are treated as gods and what they say goes. The dogs are expected to, to mind out of their way, to leave their food alone. Um, and if they play, they play with certain rules. Um, and I, I think that's it is so important that the dogs have got rules. Um, and that's what we're missing in the, the wider dog community. It's not just the bullies. Mm. Chris, uh, I, this isn't a criticism. I, I'm just interested. There are so many different dog breeds out there. Why would you choose a dog that does have an element of risk in its behaviour when there are some of the other ones you can choose from that are, are, are more sedate? It, it, it's almost like a cost-benefit, isn't it? So the, the benefits and the personalities of the dogs and the... the the extreme sort of social connection that you get from them, for me, outweighs that little bit of effort that needs to go into management. So and, explain and that, explain that really to us. What, what do you mean by that, that social connection? So the, the way that they've been bred is, is really, because they wanted to move away from the fighting dogs, there's a very, very strong um, social drive and I personally have not seen that connection with a dog in any other breed. Mm. It's uh, you almost have to see them and meet them to believe it. Okay, so you're sort of there from what I'm reading to the lines. You're blaming irresponsible breeders, really. I want to speak to Stan now because you're a retired dog behavioralist. Uh, you were also an expert witness during the Dangerous Dogs Acts of 1991. So, listening to that, um, I just want to gauge what you feel about it. Is it? bad breeders, is it bad owners, or is it bad dogs? We've heard arguments for all three. I think it's a bit of all of them, Holly. Um, the XL Bully is probably uh, the most dangerous dog breed I have ever seen or worked with, mm. and I've been dealing with them for 40 years. The bloodline is from fighting champions. These fighting gentlemen have got something called gameness in it. It means that they will fight, but they will fight to the death. Just beating something is not enough for this. They've got to kill it, which is why in the last three years, 75% of all deaths in this country have come from attacks from XL bullies. Now, you've got Chris there, who's an owner and a trainer. I'm sure Chris knows that over the last three years, three Professional dog handlers have been killed by these dogs. One of them, uh, a guy called Adam Watts, he, uh, he was a, an amazing uh, dog behaviorist and trainer, and he rehabilitated bad dogs. His wife, unfortunately, died uh, six months before from cancer. He had six children, and he went to work with this XL bully working with it, and he killed him within about a minute and a half. Uh, this is an incredibly dangerous dog. I don't think the Dangerous Dogs Act and banning this breed, just banning this breed, is going to do any good because it hasn't done since 1991. Why is it going to do this time? We need a whole new look of what we're going to do. And it cannot be related to breed specific because BSL, breed specific legislation, means exactly that. Mm -hmm. And as the uh, uh, as Linda mentioned earlier on, uh, these are, this isn't a specific breed, it's a crossbreed, it's a group of mastiffs with a base on it, and the base on it is the American Pitbull Terrier. Um, Chris, Stan says your dog is, is dangerous, it shouldn't be around. Um, I, I think I, I agree with Stan in that the BSL is is ineffective. Um, we have to do something with the XL bully. I think the ban is going to happen um, and something does need to happen because everybody needs to be kept safe. Um, once that's been done, we do need to look at other strategies um, to manage the breeding because it's... It's irresponsible breeding that's causing it. They are, it, yes, they have a base of a pit bull terrier, but that has been carefully managed and selected through. However, there's people that haven't done that. And that's where you're getting some of these strange crossbreeds that are dangerous. 
OK, all right. Well, we're going to have to leave it there now. I just wanted to just read what the RSPCA have said on this. They said every dog has the potential to bite. As we look to reduce dangerous dog incidents, we need solutions that promote responsible pet ownership, tough sanctions for those who willfully use dogs to frighten and intimidate people, and other animals will also be key. But thank you very much for joining us this morning. Thank you, Lynn.